Good afternoon. Welcome to Storytime with Grammy Field. I hope you're having a great day. Today I have another book. This one's borrowed from our local library and it's called The Ocean Star Express. It's written by Mark Hayden and Peter Sutton. Doesn't this look like a fun adventure? This summer, Joe and Mom and Dad are spending two weeks by the seaside at the Ocean Star Hotel. For five whole days, the sky is bright blue and the air is warm as toast. Dad teaches Joe to do the crawl. Joe rides the helter-skelter on the pier with Mom. They fish for crabs, they play crazy golf, and order Knickerbocker glories in the mermaid tea rooms. Then the fog rolls in. Waves thunder on the misty beach and rain comes down in buckets. Joe watches water running down the window pane and thinks about his friends and toys and wishes he was still at home. The hotel's owner Mr. Robertson, he appears. You must be bored, he says. I'll tell you what, let's take a journey around the world. That's impossible, said Joe. Well, you go and you ask your dad if you can come, says Mr. Robertson, and tell him we'll be back in time for tea. They go upstairs until they reach the landing at the top. Where now? asks Joe. Just one more flight, says Mr. Robertson. He opens up a ceiling hatch and shiny metal steps slide down. You first, he says. They clamber up into the dark. The loft is black as night. Above his head, a thousand tiny stars begin to twinkle. He hears a distant chug 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 and sees a tiny light approaching through the dark can you see the stars and the train coming along have you ever seen a model train those are can be a lot of fun the stars begin to fade away the sun comes up and stretch around him is the longest train he has ever seen he watches as the ocean star express comes steaming down the valley to the station underneath his nose where a hundred model people wait. Carefully, they pick the people up and put them in the carriages, then watch the train move off. It hoots and crawls under the river, past factories and farms and woods, and disappears behind the hill. You made all this, asked Joe. I did, says Mr. Robertson. But wait, you haven't seen the best of it. Let's find out where the Ocean Star Express is going next. Squeezing through a hole, they come out into a second room. The train is roaring through a range of snow-capped mountains as they sparkle in the sun. The waterfalls are frozen. There are pine trees and a solitary moose. I'll show you that. There's the waterfalls. I don't know if you can see the waterfalls there. And then the big solitary moose that they speak of. You press that button, whispers Mr. Robertson. Joe presses it. A string of little cable cars start moving, taking skiers up the slopes. And that's the skiers going up the slopes there. The train steams by and vanishes into a forest. Come on, says Mr. Robertson. There's more. They crawl into another room. A blazing yellow sun is painted on the ceiling. There are camels, pyramids, and palms. 
Joe and Mr. Robertson bend down and blow to make a sandstorm, and the train snakes on into the rolling dunes. Every room seems to have a different adventure, doesn't it? I think that's why Mr. Robertson says it's a trip around the world. They duck and they wriggle through another hole and come out into a fourth room. There are rocks and beaches and an ocean full of real water. Joe dips his fingers in and 20 fishing boats start rocking on the waves he makes. A lighthouse winks. The train honks twice and roars into a tunnel through the cliff. Do you see where they're going into the tunnel here? You can't hardly see it, so I'll bring it up a little closer. But there's the tunnel that they're going to go into. Pretty cool. One last squeeze and they are home. A church bell chimes. Brake hiss. The train pulls up. They take the tiny people out and let them stretch in their tired legs. Before they leave the attic, Mr. Robertson gets out a, out a cardboard box. He digs around inside and finds a model of a little boy. Let's make him look like you, he says. They take out paints and brushes and they give him Joe's blue jeans, Joe's white jumper, and Joe's blonde hair. They sit him on the station bench. They put a tiny suitcase by his feet. They put a tiny ice cream in his hand. Now, every time I come up here, says Mr. Robertson, I'll put you on the train and you can travel around the world again. Ooh, look at how happy Joe is. I love that smile. <laughs> they go downstairs. The rain has stopped. The sun is shining, and it keeps on shining. Mom and Dad and Joe build castles on the beach. They visit the aquarium, and they ride on the bumper cars. And soon, the holiday is at an end. They pack their bags and say goodbye to Mr. Robertson, and they drive away. Back at home, Joe lies in bed. And as he falls asleep, he starts to dream about the Ocean Star Express. He hears a distant chug, 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 and sees a tiny light approaching through the dark. His bed becomes a station bench. The rucked up duvet is a mountain range. His nightlight is the moon, and he is tiny now. There is a tiny suitcase by his feet, and in his hands is a tiny ice cream cone. The train slows down. Joe climbs aboard and settles down. The whistle blows. The wheels start to turn. The carriage rumbles, and the Ocean Star Express pulls out into the star-filled night. Kind of dark pictures. Are you able to see okay? And that's the end of that story. So he got to travel around the world with Mr. Robertson, and at the end he's traveling the world through his dreams. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, that story, and I hope someday you get to see some model trains. They're a lot of fun. Have a great afternoon.